Step 5. Interpret the results. When the training ceases, you are asked whether you want to perform sensitivity analysis. This takes some time, so it isn't included in this tutorial. However, you can try it on your own. This sensitivity analysis checks whether the prediction accuracy is very sensitive to the particular cases, or the percentage of cases, chosen for the testing data. Once you decline the option of sensitivity analysis, the summary of the results appears as you see here. Among other things, it shows that all of the predictions, one, two, or three, in the training data are correct, and only 2.86% of the predictions in the testing data are bad or wrong. Actually, this translates to one bad prediction out of 35. You always hope that the neural net will do nearly as well on the testing data as on the data it was trained on. For the current example, this is nearly true. Below this summary, you see the following classification matrices for the training and testing data. They break down the prediction errors in more detail. Each row corresponds to an actual value of the dependent variable. For example, 19 of the testing cases were type 2. 18 of these were predicted correctly. However, one was predicted to be type 1. The results also contain a couple of histograms of error probabilities, but I won't discuss them here. Finally, the prediction shown on the data sheet right here appear to the right of the original data. Each prediction, either for a test case or a prediction case with the dependent variable unknown, shows the prediction, one, two, or three, and a confidence probability in its correctness. As you can see, there is virtually complete certainty about the correctness of all five predictions. Also, you can see that there is virtually 100% confidence in the prediction of the first test cases that you see here, and each of them was correct. One drawback of neural nets in general is that they don't provide equations, as in multiple regression, for the dependent variable as a function of the independent variables. Therefore, it is difficult to know which variables are driving the dependent variable, that is, how the neural net is actually making its predictions. You can check Calculate variable impacts in the train tab of the training dialog box. However, the primary purpose of this option is to identify independent variables that are, quote, not pulling their weight. Then you could possibly substitute other independent variables for these weak ones. Now it's your turn. Examine the results on the Neural Tools summary sheet and the predictions on the data sheet. Note that your results will differ from those here because of the random selection of testing cases but they should be similar. Experiment with the values of the independent variables in the first five cases to see if you can make the predictions change. With enough experimentation, you might start to get a sense of what variables are driving the predictions.